Welcome to a new year of Bibliophiles. We're thrilled you could join all of us tonight to hear about a wonderful project created with faculty and students from the Center for the Book with materials in our own special collections and archives. We'll begin with a land acknowledgement followed by some short introductions and they'll believe there's gonna be some time for questions and answers at the end of the session. So first land acknowledgement. <clears throat> The University of Iowa is located on the homelands of the Ojibwe, Chippewa, Iowa, Kickapoo, Menominee, Miami, Missouri, Omaha, Osage, Ot Otoe, Ottawa, Ponca, Potawatomi, oh, uh, Sac and Fox, Sioux, the three affiliated tribes, Ho-Chunk, Winnebago nations, uh, the following tribal nations, the Omaha tribe of Nebraska and Iowa, the Ponca tribe of Nebraska, uh, the Sac and Fox of the Mississippi in Iowa and Ho-Chunk um, of uh, nations continue to thrive in the state of Iowa and we continue to acknowledge them. As an academic institution, it is our responsibility to acknowledge the sovereignty and traditional territories of these tribal nations and the treaties that were used to remove these tribal nations and the histories of dispossession that have allowed for the growth of this institution since 1847. Consistent with the university's commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion, understanding the historical and current experiences of Native peoples will help inform the work we do collectively as a university to engage in building relationships through academic scholarship, collaborative partnerships, community service, enrollment, and retention efforts acknowledging our past, our present, and future Native nations. To learn about the four tribal nations still thriving in the state of Iowa, please check out these sites that will be posted in the chat. So here's a talk about hidden collections, artist books in Spanish and South American indigenous languages. Uh, our Julie Leonard and Kara, Karen Karcha, in addition to graduate student curators who we'll come to in a moment. Julie Leonard is Director of Graduate Studies and Associate Professor in the Center of the, uh, for the Book, and Karen Cartier is Associate Professor of Practice, also in the Center for the Book. Both are accomplished teachers, craftspeople, and makers of books, and we're happy to have them adding important descriptive information to the book arts materials in our collection and using them in their exhibit. Further, both have co-curated, along with graduate students, Mariana Tejeda, and Camila de Urioste Laborde, an exhibition on Spanish and indigenous language book arts materials that is currently on display in the special collections and archives reading room on the third floor of the main library. We're grateful for all of their labor, expertise, and interest in our collections and wish to thank them for talking with us tonight uh, about the work they've been doing. Join me in welcoming professors Julie Leonard and Karen Cartia and graduate student curators Mariana Tejeda and Camila de Urioste Laborde to Bibliophiles. Thanks, everyone. Thanks to you, Eric. And um, I want to thank Special Collections for hosting the exhibit, Hidden Collections, and for inviting us to be here tonight. And thanks to everybody who's showing up. Um, I'm going to do a bunch of thanks and then pass this on because <laughs> there's um, and I'm not even thanking everybody, but this exhibit is the first project to come out of a database Karen and I have been building for quite a while with the help of numerous graduate assistants at the Center for the Book. A major projects grant, projects grant from international programs supported the data research and curation involved in making this particular exhibit. So many thanks to international programs and also to Special Collections for supporting us with this venture, especially Lindsay Mullen, who has facilitated our, our pulling, researching, and photographing many, many books. The exhibit focuses on Spanish language artist books held in special collections. Recent UI Center for the Book graduates, Joque Maurice Virouette and Maria Carolina Ceballos documented over 130 Spanish language books over the summer. Mariana and Camilla reviewed and selected 40 for this exhibition writing bilingual descriptions for each book and making videos and audio recordings for a selection of the books. These recordings are accessible to viewers through the QR codes included on the labels and in the exhibit guide that will be available in the special collections reading room. Um, that's thanks to those two too. I would never have pulled that off. <laughs> so I also wanna be sure to thank all the staff at special collections. Giselle Simone and her staff in the Conservation Lab, Mark Anderson and Jenny Bradshaw in the digital studios and cataloging, and Jenna Bonastali, who photographed all the works in the exhibit. This really has been the work of many, and I want to acknowledge and celebrate that. 
Karen is now going to give you a brief overview of the overarching project, the Book Art Research Database, and we'll show examples of books documented for the database, and then turn this over to Camilla and Mariana, who will offer an introduction to the works in the exhibit. Okay, we're going to share screen. Uh, the idea behind the project really was to um, highlight all the makers um, that go into the creation of a singular book, um, especially artist books, um, and the normal ways in which we, I think everyone knows that we um, usually talk about books, um, highlights maybe the author, and we wanted to provide researchers the opportunity to be able to research by the bookbinder, the paper maker, um, typesetters, anybody who had any involvement in the book at all. Um, and uh, the other thing that we are really interested in is providing a way for researchers and makers to um, access books via the information that is just too, too big to put in a um, regular catalog. So for example, um, the structure of a book like the one that's on the screen now by Islam Ali, um, which this is a concertina book on handmade paper that has spices embedded in the paper. Um, so those are all um, material aspects of the books that we are interested in um, having be really readily searchable. So this is the book that I think you can see um, the details of the spices embedded in it. Um, if you haven't seen this book, definitely go into special collections and pull it because it's a, a olfactory delight um, along as well as a structural delight. Um, and um, this is another example. This is a, a book by Walter Hamity. Uh, and um, we chose this book um, because it highlights, this is just, when we search, we have five different categories that um, we can allow researchers and makers to search in. Um, and so um, this is just an example of three of the lists of information that someone could, could look for. And this is a book that contains um, elements of collage, hand paper making, letterpress printing in different forms, as well as um, the genres, uh, mixed genres of found text fragments and prose. And um, so all of those things go into this book. Um, and you can see how these artist books really demand um, sort of this level of attention, I think, in order for them to be easily accessed. Um, you can see here um, a sticker, um, die cuts, as well as letterpress printing, um, uh, fold out texts, and um, maybe a little booklet off to the right. Um, that is um, in, a, in a little sort of library pocket at the back of the book with footnotes in it. Um, and the other thing that um, we hope that the database provides is all this information about all the information, all the materials and processes used to create the book, all the people who had a hand in creating the book, but we also provide a description of the book um, as a way to give um, someone just um, preliminary researcher the idea that actually what's going on in this book, for example, is someone who is trying to upend all our conventions and expectations of what a codex is um, and how we would proceed reading through a book like this. Okay, and this next book um, is by Janice Press, is actually a contemporary of Walter Hamity. Um, and Claire Van Vliet uh, founded that press in the 1960s. And her books often make use of geometric forms and reference quilts very often, um, use non-adhesive interlocking structures and very many different kinds of paper, both machine-made and handmade. 
There's a very conscious attempt to interlock textual content, most often poetry, with the forms the book takes. This is a great example with poems by Sandra McPherson that center on a collection of African-American quilts. This book would show up as a result for a number of search terms, including letterpress printing, handmade paper, concertina bindings, paste papers, and collage. And this next one is um, one of the books that's in the exhibit, and this is called Libro de la Preguntas. It's included in the current exhibit and is by a UI alumni, Aurora Diarmende, who's a Cuban artist who is here in the printmaking program and the center for the book. The book contains three languages, Spanish, English, and Haitian Creole. It presents collective memories of detainees and workers at Guantanamo military base during the 1990s through a series of questions posed by the artist. One finds here a paper laced binding structure, a variety of silkscreen printed colored pages with bold text, a search including letterpress printing, photopolymer plates, silkscreen, paper case bindings, handmade papers would bring up this book as one result. Um, and this is a book um, made by Taller Leñateros, which we'll hear more about. Um, uh, Camilla will talk further about, but um, one of the reasons that we wanted to uh, bring show this book is um, just the really um, variety of form that we see here, handmade candles, um, clay candle holders, the clay chalice, um, and inside um, this little um, structure, um, we see three case bound books, um, and I'm going to scoot ahead for a second. Um, to the right, we see also a Matt Fold book. Um, and um, you can see just the beautiful variation of um, uh, lino cuts and screen printing create, used to create these images. Um, and this is an example of one of our descriptions of the book. Um, where we just try to give um, people looking, searching a little bit more information. And um, because of this exhibit, we're lucky enough to have this um, both information in English and Spanish. Mm. Um, and and this is um, the last book we're going to talk about before passing it on. And I love this little book. It's called A la, Vel A la Velta de la Rueda. And it's another book in the exhibit. It's lovely and small. And it's a great example of experimental writing and utilizing interactive elements, including a vowel, to create multiple texts with a series of words that change through the use of pull tabs, cutouts, and vowels. The, this La Velta would turn up through specific search terms, in, especially in the areas of genre and structure. At this point, I'm going to turn this over to Mariana and Camilla. Um, I just want to say that they are multi-talented um, <laughs> individuals. They're artists and writers in their own right. We were just so lucky to have them work on this project. It felt like um, uh, just like a serendipitous perfection. Um, so they worked with us all through winter break to to select the books and write the translations for all of the descriptions and rewrite some of the descriptions. Um, and they also made um, recordings and videos for some of the books. So if you go into the, when you go into the reading room, there'll be little um, QR codes on the labels and QR codes within the guidebook that if you click on them, you can listen to, um, a reading of a poem or a fragment in the book, or you can see a video of the book. So Camilla and Mariana, we will figure out how to stop sharing <laughs> then, yeah. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight and thank you, Julie and Karen. And because we wanted to privilege uh, everybody seeing our faces and actually hearing us, we are not together and we are not in the reading room, but we wanted to give you like a tour of the actual exhibition. And also for the people who's joining the Zoom, not in Iowa. So I'm gonna go ahead and share that video. And Camille and I will be telling you what you're seeing.
Well, this is the third floor where you'll find <laughs> um, the collection. It was really an amazing experience working on this project. What you're looking at right now is what um, Julie talked about, this Mayan altar. And this is another book by the same Leñateros workshop. Um, they are a workshop that work, these are women that um, make books in Maya language. Um, all of this that we're looking at. And so they tell stories and Mayan culture and write books um, and then make the, the, the paper. So it's an amazing workshop. This one is one of my favorites. It's a workshop in Cuba called um, Vigia. I'm gonna talk a little bit more later about this, this, um, this editing house. Um, but as you can see the books, I mean, each book is absolutely unique, handmade. Um, by volunteers. This is the book that Julie talked about. Um, so we've kind of grouped them. We were thinking about how, how do we group them? And some of them are by editing house. Some of them are by, well, this, these books are more text heavy or these books are more visual. Um, this is a cloth book, for example, next to a book that is actually made of posters. Um, as you can see, yeah, go ahead. It's like my favorite case. It has the book that uh, Karen talked about, with the, the La Vuelta de la Rueda. And it's like, we call it the funny window because it has like this variety of books. This is a book uh, called Don't Get Pregnant. And it gives a lot of weird advices on how to not get pregnant. Don't follow them. They don't work. And this is a book, uh, called Care Libro or Book Face. And it has those tiny holes that you can actually wear the book. So, yeah. And this is like the Mexican aisle. Yeah. It is like a lot of um, poetry and visual books made in Cuernavaca in Mexico. I would call this the chic Mexican, whereas the other is the like spiritual Mexican. <laughs> but yeah, that was interesting to see also the range of these books, because some of them are uh, you know, handmade paper, artisan, like, you know, they have coffee and they have leaves and others like this, for example, are more, um, yeah, like chic, like um, elegant or some are, you know, more irreverent or, so it was really interesting to see the range of different um, ways that people reinvented for us <laughs> what it is to make a book. So yeah, this is one of your favorites. Escrito a mano, and it's like a bunch of journals put in a collage and cut out. You cannot actually read what the journals say, but like the images he creates with those handwritten pages are beautiful. Yeah, and as you see here, the labels, some of them, if you see a QR code, you can just um, click that with your phone and that will take you to a video because some of these books, we were sad that people couldn't just, you know, grab them and flip through them because this is really a sensory experience. That's my book. <laughs> we have a little um, case for the curators. Um, so yeah, but I'm not gonna talk about that. <laughs> and, well, um, is playing, uh, her novel, that is an alphabetic uh, novel. Uh, yeah. yeah, so we have like fragments in there. And then the, the floor below, uh, I am sharing also. So yeah, Julie and Karen, invited us to also be part of the exhibition. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I love how this came about because we were thinking about putting in a book with, about uh, by Pablo Neruda and, you know, we had, oh, what about we just put this instead of the book, <laughs> you know, the counter of Pablo Neruda. So that was interesting. Um, so yeah, basically what, what I was saying is this is a really sensory experience. You know, these books, when you open, them and they just expand or you you discover that you have to pull something out or flip something or turn something around it's it's just amazing to to have them in your hands to smell them to feel the paper um so although seeing them is amazing we really encourage you to come back after the exhibit is over <laughs> and you know find the books that you that you were interested in and just really have them in your hands read through them um, the paper here, for example, you can see that, you know, it's awesome to touch it. So 
Um, yeah, this, these are books also by Leña Teros. As you can see, there's a really big range in what they do as well. I, I love this. Um, this is like a recipe book for how to make paper and natural dyes. And this is a book um, that tells a lot of stories of Mayan stories. And, you know, you have a mask with the book. Um, it's just, every book is like a surprise. Uh, yeah, this is the fun Iowa City winter. <laughs> <laughs> I really related to that image there. So these are like tiny comic books or coloring books or, you know, they're just totally irreverent, um, small. And um, yeah, we love how irreverent a lot of these books are, aside from creative and how so many of them um, really make a like uh, work with the text, like the text is enhanced by the structure or the paper and the, in the editing and the drawing and it all just works together to make a, an artistic object and to create an experience for the reader. This is a cool book. It's by Camilo Jose Sela and the drawings are made by Picasso, like the real Picasso. So I love that book. Yeah, and as, as uh, Camilo says, like the name of the exhibition, the Hidden Collections, it is like I have been in Iowa for five years and I have no idea that this thing exists and that you can actually go and touch the books and yeah, to open each book. It's like a Christmas present, like a surprise and a thing to pull up and open and yeah, the sound that it makes and the smell and yeah, it's, it's such an experience. So don't, don't just leave it in the windows, go and, and enjoy it. Yeah. So now I wanna to talk to you, well, we're each gonna to talk to you about like the special books that we fell in love with when we worked on this exhibit. And for me, it was one particular book. Well, I, I, I was interested in two, especially the ones we saw, um, the Leñateros that we talked about where um, there are these Mayan women that have been working since 1975 on making these books with handmade paper and different techniques. They're not all like handmade paper. Some of them are really actually pretty chic, <laughs> um, but they all kind of elevate and uh, rescue and work with um, Maya culture and Mayan stories and Mayan language. And Mariana incredibly found two people that could actually read these languages. So if you click on the QR codes on these books, you will hear the languages being, like the, the text being read in Mayan. So that's, an amazing experience. I don't know if you want to say something about that. Yeah, uh, we found uh, these uh, uh, Mayan women, Juana Ruiz and Lidia Jimenez. And from their community, they recorded the readings for the books and they sent them to us. So yeah, to actually be able to listen to the Mayan. And some of them are in Mayan and Spanish. Some of them are in Mayan with the book, uh, coming over uh, the images and also, yeah, it, it, it was like a really interesting to be able to hear it out and discover which is especially kind of Mayan they were using and all that. Yeah, so there was that. And then there was another editing house that I also fell in love with, which was the uh, Vigia, which I talked about. Um, so I just I did a little bit I, a little bit more research on them, and I found that they are an editing house uh, that work in Matanzas, Cuba. And I was interested in finding out what why they did what they did. You know, like um, was it out of necessity that they made these these books um, handmade and with all these um, like recycled material, or what was the the reason behind it? And so I found out that actually what it is is that they have decided to to like um to create these books that are very beautiful but they are um outside of any commercial grid so like for example the authors aren't paid they, they receive books in exchange for their texts and they are made by volunteers and they only uh, make the books with recycled material or donated material so they don't buy anything and they don't get anything from the government either they are totally independent now this book was very special to me because the text, when I started reading the text just to find out what it was so I could write the description, I found that 
It's about a woman con called Ana Mendieta, a Cuban artist who actually went to the University of Iowa. She studied here, she was an artist. And so I saw Iowa, wait, what is that? So I Googled her, of course. And look at this, it's so amazing. <laughs> Um, so I found out that she had been um, like taken away from Cuba when she was 12. Her parents wanted her to um, escape the situation in Cuba. And so she came to Iowa eventually. She grew up here. She became an artist. And I found it so amazing um, that she became a, a visual artist who is most known for her silhouettes. So she would like take pictures of herself um, kind of becoming one with nature, like with water or with grass or with rocks or with marshes um, in an attempt to re-find her roots somehow. Um, and so if you see this book is full of these silhouettes, but also she died tragically. She fell from, um, it, it, I mean, um, some say that she was murdered by her husband. It was never like really found out. But anyway, she died. She fell from a, from a building. So this silhouette becomes not only her art, but also like the chalk outline of her body. And the text is amazing. So I, I fell in love with this book because it is like the embodiment of art, not only in the text and the story and finding out a connection to Iowa, but also, you know, just... Um, the visuals and the material that it was made from. It was made from the earth that she was kind of trying to, to recover. So that was my favorite. Yeah, and well, as for me, I was really interested in these like super like multi-stimulating books. Uh, the one that Julie talked us about, oops, is actually my favorite one, uh, the A la Vuelta de la Rueda. That is uh, this book that has like a lot of like interactive features. And uh, it looks like a tiny Moleskin notebook as if it is like a feel the book or something. And there are parts that are like as if they're handwritten and others like in real printing and then it has like all of these like weird like things to pull out and the text is actual poetry that it has like different meanings on how you position the words in the book and I just find it like the ingenuity on like generating these uh, it is takes a lot to me also for the kind of work I have been doing with my own poetry that yeah also aspires to exceed the book so yeah this this kind of devices and surprises that you will find inside a book I find them uh, fascinating and this book in the exhibition we uh, put them together with the Cara de Libro book, the one with the eyes, the Buddha in a mask, and also with the Don't Get Pregnant book that has like this uh, popular advice or like people advices like, yeah, you should totally put a double condom or jump after having intercourse so you won't get pregnant. And it's like, I don't think you should be following this and it comes along with pretty fun explicit illustrations and the other book that spoke a lot to me and we don't have a video of it but I wanted to uh, read it out loud it's uh, a book called El Sol y los de Abajo and I found it fascinating because uh, this author writes in Spanglish all the time and the musicality of the combination of English and Spanish, I, I find it really compelling. So uh, this is like a fragment of the book. It is not really separated in poems. Toma Lupe, lleva este escapulario, que lo bendiga ese cabrón faldillón del Father Kelly, and tell him to keep his hands to himself, que ya tu apa sabe. Ah, and bring a veladora for your brother, and the telegram on the table, don't open it. It may be from the word saying Toti is dead. Muchachos, 
Come and eat. Después saldrán a jugar. It's my turn to kick the can. Rosa, te quiere mi mamá, because the social worker's here. Dios mío, a visit from the Gaba. Alcen la mesa, levanten esas garras. Americans were always at my house. The ones who came to strip my Indian flesh from me and to crucify me with germ-bearing labels more infectious than rusty nails. Americans at my house. Cuando no era el probation officer, era el consular de la escuela, la jura, or some long-haired lost lamb maverick chick offering us the world so she could write her thesis. And so, yeah, I, I like love those poems that speak so much of this, uh, like the nature of living in between two worlds and in between the Spanish and the English, that it's what the exhibition is about, but also what I find to be my experience living here in Iowa. So I, I found it really interesting. Um, Julie and Karen, do you have? You've done it all. We don't have to do anything now. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, it was just an honor to work with you two. And I think that your involvement made this exhibit what it is. So um, we're very grateful. Yeah, we're, we're so thrilled that this is actually the first official project that came out of the database um, that we've been working on so long. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're just thrilled about that. And we just think we we certainly could not have done this on our own. Right. 